Hey guys, in this video we're talking about autism in girls and masking, coming up. Love, love, good. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Dan. I have Asperger's Syndrome, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia. I make weekly videos on this type of content, so if you're new around here and would like to see more, remember to hit that subscribe button by hitting that notification bell. Also, if you're watching on Facebook, make sure to give this page a like and a thumbs up to see daily videos from me. Okay guys, at the beginning of every video, you know that I read out questions that you have sent me on Instagram, and if you want me to read out your question, just like this, and be featured in a video just like this, remember to head over to my Instagram and give me a follow and turn the notifications on so you know when I ask you to ask me questions. Okay, first one here. Charlie can help me out with somebody as well. Uh, is from 74 Cloudy, and they said, Do you prefer autistic person or person with autism? Charlie, you want to take us on? I prefer autistic person because I think if you say person with autism, I think some people are going to maybe misinterpret that as like a, an illness or a disease or something. Mm. Whereas, Interesting. Yeah. I actually have no preference on this, and I think that people can express themselves in any way possible. I don't take offence to yeah. anything, really. So, all right. The next one is from underscore Megan dot A dot Packer, and they say, <laughs> "How do you cope with depression and anxiety when it comes to Asperger's?" Hmm. Oh, I still struggling with this one. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know how you do. I mean, I've had therapy. Depression. I mean, like antidepressants. I've had that before, but I didn't like it. I, I, I preferred therapy than antidepressants. Okay, the next question is from Emma underscore Norwood underscore X, and they said, do you have any strategies for being out in public with autism? I have one, right, I have one. one. I wear headphones and sunglasses, and it does me a treat, because I actually have noise cancelling ones, so I'm away in my own kind of like mm -hmm. magic land, and then I kind of ignore people, so that works. And that's it, that's all I got. What about you, Sean? Yeah, I'm very, very tunnel vision-like. I'm pretty much similar to you, um, noise cancelling headphones, but I I get a little bit self-conscious, even though it's just real stupid, to be honest, because I, sh I shouldn't be self-conscious about that, because it really does help, and no one should feel self-conscious. or should No. Be guys, I'm wearing my merch today. If you want to support this channel and get your own, links in the description below, or just under this video, get yourself some Aspergill merch and support the channel. Okay, guys, in this video, I am joined by Charles Davis, and you guys have seen Charles in a video before, and I have had lots of requests from people saying, hey, can you have done a video with Charles? So Charles come all the way over on a plane this time <laughs> to see you lay out here in the office Office and it's good, it's good, it's good fun. So me and Charles are actually going to break it down and talk about masking uh, in females. And also, tomorrow we're going to film a video for Q&A, which is super, super dope. So remember to uh, make sure you have notifications turned on on your subscription here so you get notified when we upload that next video. It's going to be super fun. Okay, well, Charles is actually an MTV <laughs> superstar. She's, uh, you're on like season five or something now of, of MTV. Yeah, I'm going to be filming series five of Just Had To Of Us, so that's where you might have seen me. And also, she's got an absolutely awesome Instagram page, which I'll leave all the links down below anyway. But Charlotte is um, now doing YouTube videos as well, so I have left a link in the description below to her YouTube channel. So you gotta go over there and give her some love. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and uh, yeah, you'll see videos that Charlotte makes on her own without me there. <laughs> I just want to say that um, that Charles also has a diagnosis of autism and mm -hmm. um, this is why she's doing this kind of stuff and so we decided that a lot of people don't know that much about masking and masking with females and things like that and we've broken down what we're going to talk about into three kind of headings and the first one is like we're going to talk about what masking is then we're going to talk about how it impacts kind of daily life and things like that and then well, at the end we're going to talk about how it impacts the diagnosis process for females on the spectrum so Shah, without further ado do you want to kind of like maybe outline and explain what masking is? Yeah, so masking is a coping mechanism and it's basically um, a result of years of being rejected, that kind of thing, and the want to fit in because mm -hmm. As you're growing up, you start to realise that because you're on the spectrum, you're a little bit different. You don't know, well, you don't necessarily have to know why you're different, but um, to try and fit in, because I mean, I try to hide the fact that I'm a bit strange all of the time. Yeah. And it's really about like adapting behaviours um, from other people and just using it as a facade so that, yeah, it's, it's masking that I have social difficulties so people don't know and that they can't sense it. Oh, interesting. And like the thing is, a lot of people, in terms of masking, a lot of people think that it's just a thing that girls do. But I, f I do know that like masking is something that anybody on the spectrum yeah, would do. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's way more prominent in females. Yes. And do you know why that is? I think it's because we are more socially aware. 
and we're a little bit self-conscious yeah. as well. I'd say that you're absolutely right with what you're saying there. And I think like mm -hmm. the other one is that girls kind of, um, they have that kind of desire to want to strive to be independent, I guess is the mm -hmm. word. They don't want to feel vulnerable. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, the, the, way, the way the females kind of brain works is that they want to be like non-vulnerable kind of on it. So I think this is why masking kind of is way more prominent because I think guys can just be lazy and be like, oh, you know, I can't be asked doing anything different. I'm just going to be me and if I don't like it, sod it. But I think girls are, are slightly different in that respect. Um, masking, I'd say, would you say it impacts every single female that you know on the spectrum? Or would you say that it's something that is kind of like in some people? Maybe people don't do it. How would you explain? Um, I mean, I don't know many girls on the... I don't That's know. I actually don't know many girls that, on that the spectrum. And one of those reasons is down to masking. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... so um, yeah, so all your friends are like not on the spectrum? No, basically not. Mm -hmm. Just me. In terms of like... A, Masking, I mean, how would you say, does, does masking impact your life all the time? Or does it only like, you know, is it, is it something that happens every now and then? Oh, has it got better as you got older? Well, so before I was diagnosed, and I only got diagnosed two years ago, um, yes, it was impacting like pretty much every aspect of my life because um, I didn't know that masking was an autism trait. And I kept doing it, and by doing it, I just caused this massive like identity crisis because I didn't know who I was. Um, but now that I recognise that, it's obviously a lot easier to try and accept myself who I am now because I I know the reason I'm masking now. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But um, you know, it, it still affects me in terms of like um, social activity and that kind of thing. And when I'm in work and I have to put on that front all the time, and it's just it's exhausting to be honest. So like on, on a daily scale, like impacting you daily, would you say that it, it is a daily occurrence? Like, is it something yeah. that impacts you daily? Yeah, because it because you know I, I work nearly every day and I definitely. So how does that impact you when you finish your day's work? Like when you don't have to mask? What's that? What's that aftermath like? I mean, it can be from work or going out with friends, anything like that. I'm absolutely exhausted from it. Okay, so here's a question. Do you have any tips or takeaways that you've used as a strategy to help with masking and then that kind of like, you know, the aftermath overload when you get home? Like, well, now, because I'm obviously diagnosed and I know how to help myself, I would just say, um, just try and learn to be more comfortable in your own skin. Just, just be true to yourself. You know? So if there was another, if there was like, if there was one thing you'd say, there's another girl watching this who's feeling like the same thing and they're, they're masking and then they, they come home and they're kind of exhausted, what would you say to them? What, what, what advice would you give them? Be yourself. Just because, be yeah, just be you. Because, I mean, it's only going to cause confusion to yourself and others if you're... Yeah, of If you go from being one person to yeah. another completely different person. You're never you know, going to know who you are. If you're, yeah. Tr yeah, exactly. Which is a problem I had because when I was 19, I actually had a um, mental breakdown because it got to a point where... And I mean, this, this wouldn't apply to everyone because um, some people are diagnosed a lot sooner than I was, but... I didn't know who I was and I masked so much and I became somebody else and yeah, I just didn't know who I was. So this is kind of like, I guess the, the, the bigger picture of masking is that not only does it, okay, it impacts you day to day, day to day, yeah, but yeah. that will build up and that become- long lasting effect. Yeah, because you know? that's what's gonna become like a, a life issue if you if you continue without any kind of like um, understanding, I guess that's the main the well, yeah, of it. Especially if you're not aware that it's an actual autism trait. You know, yeah, it's, it's a course. trait that's very common amongst um, females in particular on the, yeah. on the spectrum. If you're, so. if you're going around the day thinking like that you're just not, and you're just a neurotypical person, then you're obviously going to be in a confused mm -hmm. mess. Well, yeah. Right, so let's let's talk about, and this is this fascinates me. We all know that like the, there's more males diagnosed than there are females at the moment, and the, one of the main reasons for that is because the old research was done for males, and all the testing mm -hmm. was done modeled around males, which obviously doesn't fit for females. And one of the main reasons I feel like this is because masking, it's not something that comes into it. I think like when I was diagnosed, masking wasn't really anything that came into it. I mean, they, they might have gone over it like coping mechanisms, they call it for, for males. Like yeah. they kind of said, oh, there's work around coping mechanisms, right? Yeah. But what I'd love for you to discuss a little bit more about is like, how did masking impact like the diagnosis process from your perspective or anything you can talk about and discuss about why masking impacts diagnosis for females? Okay, so it impacts massively on diagnosis because 
you know, health professionals. It took a long time for me to be diagnosed because um, there's little research done with girls on the spectrum and so health professionals didn't know what was what was affecting me. Mm. You know, I've had one-to-one -one sessions with a psychologist and even they couldn't identify mm. it because there's so little research done. And, and that's supposed to be professionals as well. That's ex weird. Exactly. And, you know, I've been in and out of mental health services for years and still, like, after, I mean, I, I think I was in these health, well, I was in health services for... Um, like a decade wow. and still I had no answer and I, I just knew deep down that there was something affecting me and I just couldn't pinpoint what it was and nobody could give me an answer and the tough thing is is like you don't know you're masking and you don't know that's a trait so you're going to carry on doing it and it and it just doesn't benefit your chances of getting a diagnosis so it's just one of those things where it just it's such a nightmare. It is a bit of a nightmare. And again, you're dealing with like, you know, people always put you like through mental health, like the first thing they'll do is through mental health. Mm -hmm. And of course it's not, it's a neurological thing, not a mental health condition, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the thing that fascinates me about that is they're already looking in the wrong place for treatment. They're looking at mental health treatment when it should be neurological treatment, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, like therapies, etc. So, um, you know, going forward from um, <laughs> like, you know, in and out of kind of different places, um, how did you, or when did you realize that it wasn't something like bipolar or something? Like how did that kind of, how did that shift happen? Or did at one point, did you think, oh, it's bipolar or it's... So I personally thought that it might have been a um, borderline personality disorder. Oh. Um, but then I started to think to myself, well, actually, no, you know, I've, I've been this for, as, I've been this way for as long as I can remember mm. um, before anything like really like traumatic happened in my life. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't like triggered, but it wasn't like a, a, an episode that triggered in your life. That no, changed no, I, who you were. I remember being like it for a very long time. And I started to, I mean, it started to dawn on me that I may be autistic because um, I've got family members on the spectrum who are very similar to me in a lot of ways. And although they're a lot younger than me, I still questioned myself. It made me question myself. I was like, do you know what? I actually see a lot of myself in them. Mm. So yeah, um, you know, after recognizing this in myself, I went to the doctor mm -hmm. and I said, do you think I could be autistic? And this is where the masking part comes in. No. Now I have learned after a long time of having, um, you know, well, I've been left to my own devices for such a long time now that I've developed my own coping mechanisms. I haven't had any help. And one of these is to make eye contact. Oh, okay. So generally, so they were like... because girls are better at masking, I think girls are generally better at making eye contact because oh. they don't want to make it obvious that there's yeah. an awkward yeah. situation going on there. Okay, So that's fascinating. You know, I made eye contact with my doctor hmm. when he was talking to me. And he said to me, well, no, you can't be autistic because you're looking at me when you're talking. <laughs> and that is it's weird. Really, that's weird. That's not really something that I would it's say. It's frustrating, yeah. right? It doesn't really define autism. I mean, it's something that happens, but it's not everything. Exactly. But based on that alone, now, if, I, if, if masking was more recognized widely as a trait, more um, predominantly females, then he may have questioned that. Yeah, I, you know? I feel like a good assessor would, and yeah. I think like what I always say to people, regardless of their gender or, or sex or whatever, I say to them, mm -hmm. oh, just go to your doctor and ask for a referral. Because yeah. if a doctor's a GP, they're generally not going to know. And I think there's something like in the United Kingdom, that 48% of all GPs or general practicing doctors or physicians for anybody watching in America, mm -hmm. they don't have any understanding of autism, which is scary. That's almost half of the doctors. It, it really is. And I think that like, you know, if, if more health professionals were made more aware like gender of on it. just masking in general, It'd then they more. may question it and yeah, it may so point you in the right direction as opposed to just saying no nah, oh. you can't be autistic and not knowing enough yeah because they're not asking the right questions are they they're not exactly. they're not digging deep enough or they're not asking okay they're not asking the question in a way where it's not obvious you know what I mean like uh, yeah i think that's one of the biggest issues like especially everybody who is, is female go through a diagnosis process i think that is the biggest issue if not like the main issue with like 
girls trying to you know get through a successful diagnosis because I know loads of people get misdiagnosed they get uh, they turned away they get nothing and mm -hmm. then a couple of, like two years later and all of a sudden they get the diagnosis with a professional like a an autism specialist or something and you think yeah. my goodness how on earth did this actually slip through that net um, but I mean it, it's something that I know that the National Autistic Society are really pushing on it right now and they're trying to change this and this is why mm -hmm. I want to do videos like this so if people yeah. do relate yeah. they can have some advice now Charles what would you give advice to anybody who relates to this now who isn't diagnosed but feels the same way you did when you were like oh you know maybe it's autism what would you say to them at the moment because um health professionals aren't as educated on the subject as we'd like them to be um if you have a really strong feeling that you are autistic then you need to just go to the doctor and you need to ask them to be referred to a specialist and you know if 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 you have if, if you know deep down that there's something not quite right then just keep pursuing it because um, you might end up like me and not find out until a couple of years later. Put yourself through more kind of like trauma yeah, and stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because they're not educated on it and it's it's one of those things, yeah, it's really annoying that they're not, but at the same time, um, understand that and just look beyond it and just say, look, I, I'm, I'm not basing my potential diagnosis on your opinion. Definitely. So. Awesome. Well, Charles, thanks for coming on to the show again and doing this video with me. I'm sure that anybody watching this now will definitely have uh, some benefit from this. So yeah. if you think that this video can help somebody else, please share it on their social media platforms because mm -hmm. I feel like it could really help somebody because Charles' knowledge is super helpful. So without further ado, guys, we're going to end this video right here. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a comment down below um, with Anything you can add that can probably help somebody else. And we'll see you next time, guys. Peace.